Hello. All right. Welcome back. Uh, so we got a problem here. Radiation out of the book. Radiation detection and measurement, fourth edition by Mr. Noel there. Mr. or Dr. I don't know. Um, problem number 2.15. Using the data in figure 2.22b. Uh, it's on down here. We got it. All right. Cool deal. We'll get back to it in just a minute. Estimate the effective dose equivalent to an individual who spends an eight-hour day working at an average distance of five meters from a three-microgram californium-252 fast neutron source. All right. So, um, so this guy, I guess, wants to know his dose or something like that. Um, is he taking lunch? Uh, maybe he's working nine hours. Um, Maybe he's eating next to the friendly Californium 252 source. I don't know. So let's start solving this either way. All right. So now um, we have we have an, a, a particular uh, solution for this uh, formula we need to use for it. Um, effective dose, that's what we want to solve for, right, is equal to H sub E. That's an e H2, right? Well, this is a different kind of H. This is the fluence to, uh, fluence to effective dose conversion times none other than fluence. All right, cool deal. So you can find this on page 60 of that book I just mentioned a minute ago. Uh, but fluence is actually equal to the number of neutrons divided by uh, 4 pi times the distance squared. It's kind of like a propagational area from this source, all right? It falls off. That's 1 over r squared. Not surprised, huh? Right. Me neither. All right. Cool deal. So what kind of distance do we got? This would be the easy one, right? Distance is equal to 5 meters. So that means that 4 pi d squared, I got 4314.159 meters squared. All right. Cool deal. So that's what that is. Neutrons. A little bit more difficult to find that one. So let's start with something here I found on the internet. All right, this thing right here. Uh, neutron sources for standard-based testing. How trustworthy is it? I don't know, um, but Abraham Lincoln once said you can trust anything on the internet. Um, from Nash, uh, Los Alamos National Labs. All right, bet you didn't know this is going to be a comedy show. All right, cool deal. So scroll on down. Don't worry about reading anything. Just look for some graphs and tables here. All right, Californium 252. Here it is right here. All right, there it is. Um, Half-life, okay? That actually agrees with the number in our book. Okay, so this might actually be somewhat useful. Um, spontaneous fission branching fraction, 0 0.03096. Okay, you're going to want to write that down. If you want to solve this the long way, I'm not going to solve it the long way, whatever. Also, average neutron yield per fission using spontaneous fission, 3.768. You're going to want to write that down too if you want to do it the long way. Um, total neutron emission rate, 2.314 times 10 to the 12 neutron per gram per second. Okay, great. So what do I mean by the long way? Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, there's a formula right here for emission rate, and you can calculate that out. And basically, it says, <clears throat> it says nu there is the average neutron yield per fission. Okay, that number that was up there will give you that. Spontaneous fission branching, branching fraction, that number up there will give you that too, times ln2 over t to the 1 half. Where have we seen that before? Decay constant. Good job. All right. Times 6.02214 times 10 to the 23rd divided by uh, 252. All right. Great. So, um, yep, there it is right there. See all that? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Decay constant. Um, mass. Oh, this is something else. Yeah, we're not worried about that one. The, just this one, the emission rate. Left in neutron per gram per second. Great. So let's scroll on down a little bit further. Oh, look, yeah, I was looking at this and I thought this might be useful, but guess what? It's not because it's in, uh, I don't want to say years, right? You can hardly make out an hour down there, much less eight of them. So, um, or would that be the other way around? I can't find an eight hours, much less one. Anyway, all right. So, yeah, so this is not useful for us. Um, so let's scroll on down. Here we go. Uh, Possible candidate spontaneous fission sources for 252 Californium 
replacement. So half-life right there, right? Uh, still the same one in our book, same one up there. Spontaneous fission probability, average energy. This is important to us right there. Write that one down. 2.13 mega electron volts. Um, and here's the emission rate again, 2.31 times 10 to the 12th. All right. So again, this is what we will be using. So let's go actually use it now. So we have an emission rate. We multiply that thing by time. And not Tim, time. And we multiply it by mass. Okay, here's why. So neutron per gram per second, little dot between them, multiplied by seconds, multiplied by grams. Okay, here we have 2.314. Times 10 to the 12th multiplied by 8 hours. But you want to turn that hours into seconds. All right. Multiply by 3 micrograms. But you want to turn that micrograms into just regular old grams. Um, leaves you with 2 point. No, no, I'm sorry. Not 2 point. Nothing. Not 2 point anything. 1 point. 9, 9, 9 times 10 to the 11 neutrons. Yep, neutrons. Okay, great. So um, that is our number of neutrons. We got half of, oh, no, we got the whole thing. We got half of the uh, effective dose now. How do we know that? Well, here's our fluence, okay? Fluence is equal to... 1.999 times 10 to the 11 neutrons divided by, we'll put that neutron there, divided by 314.159 meters squared. All right, cool deal. We got half the thing done. So now for this other part, uh, fluence to effective dose conversion, we need to go back to this graph here, 2.22b, which is what it was defining earlier. All right. And I've already marked this out, but how do we, how would you know if you looked at this thing? Well, AP, we're not an Apple. PA, we're not a public announcement system. No, that's not what those stand for. PA means, AP means the front. All right. PA means the back. Okay. Lat means uh, latissimus dorsi. I don't know what the other two mean. Um, but latissimus dorsi meaning the sides. And rot means a rotting body. All right. And that's what we're going to be after all this stuff. No, rot means rotational. Okay. Rotational. And we're going to assume that within that eight hour time frame that this guy was exposed to this little source, that he was rotational. Uh, in his method of work or just exposing himself to this piece. Okay, so we go from 2.13 mega electron volts down here on this logarithmic scale, matches up with this other logarithmic scale, and we go all the way up where it has the triangle. It's kind of a mess. I, I just identified it for you. And scroll all the way to the left here, all the way to the top, all the way to the left, and we are left with, we are left with um, H sub E is equal to 1.7083 times 10 to the negative 14 sievert meters squared. Oh no, but that said, whoops, not that one, not that one, not that one. That one, that said centimeters squared. How did you just put it into meters squared, I think? That if you're taking this class, you'll be fine to be able to do that. So um, we don't generally use sieverts. So let's do this. One sievert is equal to 100 rem. Okay, 100 rem. So that means that H sub E is equal to 1.7083 times 10 to the negative 12 rem meters squared. 
Okay, good job. All right, so now, um, what do we do? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's this right here, guys. Good job. Uh, now, let's find an answer, right? That's right. That's right. You go find an answer. You're going to get an answer that's somewhere around the range of point something millirem. Okay, point something millirem. All right, well, good luck and uh, good job solving the whole thing. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.